Hello and welcome. My name is Dan and I'm part of the Future Ready team here at Make Happen. Today's session will focus on CVs and covering letters to give you a strong understanding of what they are, their purpose, as well as identifying the correct layout. Make Happen is the Essex-based part of the UniConnect program. Future Ready is a program within Make Happen made up of free events, activities and workshops designed for students in FE colleges across the whole of Essex. Our aim is to support young people in making the best decisions and taking steps towards your future. Regardless of if you have never created a CV or covering letter before, or you just want to update yours, or even compare yours to this session, by the end of this session, we hope that you have the knowledge and confidence to develop a successful CV and covering letter. So, what is a CV? CV is short for Curriculum Vitae, which translates to the course of my life. This is a written overview of a person's experience and other qualifications for a job opportunity. So what about a covering letter? A covering letter is a letter you send with your CV. Your covering letter should be complementary, but not duplicating what you already have on your CV. This should highlight why you're the best candidate for the job you're applying for. Now we are going to look at what CV and covering letters should look like, including some common errors that we want to avoid. I'm also going to give you some hints and tips to support you with the layout of your CV and covering letter. Here is a table that has three columns, covering letter, CV and both. Below each column is a list of things that you should either include in your CV, your covering letter or both. This is a really helpful table to support you with the correct content for your CV or covering letter. You could also use this as a checklist to compare your current covering letter and CV. We are now going to look at some common errors that can be included on CVs. It's really important that we try and avoid these to get the best CV possible. These can include spelling mistakes and bad grammar, incorrect information, too long in length, informal style, or the layout to be confusing. Here are some common errors that also appear on CVs. Inconsistent spacing, inconsistent font formatting, lack of location for your education, or gaps in employment history. Now we're going to look at some CV formatting tips. Margin sizes, paragraph spacing, grids and rulers, clear headings, font sizing, font choice, and the use of bullet points versus paragraphs. All of these formatting tips can be used and edited within Microsoft Word. Here is a screenshot of how you can edit the margin size in Microsoft Word. This is a great way to make your CV look tidy and professional. This tool will allow you to increase your text area size meaning you can include more information about yourself without having to decrease the size of your text. Remember to leave some margin though, as we still want our CV to look tidy and professional. The next screenshot allows you to edit the space in between the lines and paragraphs. This is another great way to support you when trying to make your CV look tidy and professional. This is an excellent tool to separate each section and make it clear for the employer to read. Now we are going to look at how we can use the job speci specification provided from the employer to help us write our covering letter. A job specification will outline key points of information about the position that you're applying for, so it's important we highlight how we can match this. Some of this information may include 
the location. The job may require you to relocate to a new area or be asked to work at different sites throughout your time of employment instead of one location. Repeated words or phrases. If repeated words or phrases are used, try to incorporate them into your cover letter to show that you match this. Be careful not to overuse this though. Maybe you could use a thesaurus to support you further. The skills required. Job specifications normally have a list of desired skills and essential skills. Have a look at these skills and try to match, match these up within your CV. Remember to use concrete examples of how you have these skills though. If you get the chance to have an interview, they may ask you about this skill and it's down to you to prove and provide an example. It's also really important to remember that all of this information for CVs and covering letters would be exactly the same if you was applying for an apprenticeship. There are also some things that you shouldn't include in your covering letter. These can include the salary, the benefits, your problems or concerns, or any form of negativity. It's really important to come across optimistic, so including the things listed above may not give this impression to the employer. If you want or need any further support or guidance, then visit our website shown on the slide. Here you will find more information to support you with your progression. Thanks for listening and good luck.